Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This video I'm going to show you how to quickly get your texture on your models and in specific take a collection of bitmaps that you may have and project them onto your uh, model like this high poly rock without having to do any kind of unwrapping and adding no modifiers at all. So in the latest versions of Wallworm under the materials submenu you'll find an option here that says bitmaps to materials. This tool has two essential usages. One is to create a material library from your bitmaps using algorithmic substance map bitmap to material. The other one is to create materials that are driven by substance maps that do not require any kind of modifiers on your objects. All the mapping is done in the texture node transformations. Previously I've already explained how to use this top section and I'm now going to explain this newer section called blended maps. It hooks into this top section. We can derive our texture maps from these filters up here. I can actually right click this pick button to open up a window that shows me the current folder. And these are the rocks I want to um, derive from. That's good. I do not want this to recursively search, so I just want to get rocks in that folder. And these are JPEGs. And then I want to randomly get some of these textures. If I click this button, it's going to use the filters up here and fill out all of these textures uh, based off of random files from that directory. If I right click it, they will all use the same texture. So it'll randomly generate a texture from uh, the list that it generates. And this is good. I'm going to use all the same texture and all the different views of this so this makes sense to you. There may be situations where you want the top to have its own because, uh, for example, the, the top of rocks might have a dust map or different colors from above that would look a certain way or from a bottom. But anyway, I'm going to use all of the same textures in this. Now there's some other options in here. There's the blend mapping. We can choose world or object. I'm going to stay on world. You might choose object if you need this object to be animated and you need the texture to stay in the same orientation as it moves. This tiling is determines the amount of tiling in, in world space if you're using world mapping or tiling in object space if you're using the object mapping. The rotate and offset is good to keep on here. It will make sure that every projection from every side will be randomly rotated and offset in texture space so that you will see much less repetition in the way the model looks. And finally, these are options what to do with the material once we have it. I'm going to apply it to this object in the viewport and importantly I'm going to use bitmap to material substance. If you don't have bitmap to material on your computer you can't take advantage of this but it will allow us to have completely tile, tiling textures with no seams here and we're not going to do any work at all other than we just loaded up a picture here. So I'm going to select my object and hit generate blended maps. It'll take a second here. So immediately we're going to see um, a representation of the texture on here. However, what you see in this viewport is not actually what is going to render on the object. And the reason that is is uh, the viewport is only displaying map channel 1 and it's not uh, taking into account how this actual shader works. I'm going to bring over slate here and we're going to pick this material so you can see what's going on behind the scenes. We have a material that has several um, texture trees uh, that are going into the diffuse specular level and the bump. Each one of these is driven by its own substance map. All of these substance maps are using in this case the same bitmap texture but they're using different transformations and different seed values for the substance. If I double click my substance map and we go to the coordinates section here you're going to see uh, the different things about how this was set up. The tiling is entered here that we entered in our UI and all of the tiling for all substances here for example there are six of them top, bottom, left, right, front, back all of their tiling values are uh, instanced controllers they have the same instance controller so if I change the tiling on this one all of them will immediately uh, follow suit and as we can see, the top one is using planar from world XYZ with XY. If we go to the next one down here, a couple down, you'll see that this one is using YZ in the world. So this is how it projects them 
um, without using any modifiers. It just uses the mapping coordinates inside the textures. So all of these trees uh, pan out into these different slots of the material. So let's see what's going to happen here. If we zoom in a little bit, if we hit the render button, you're going to see that now we have this material applied to this and the material doesn't have the seam you see here in the in the viewport. The actual render is what we want. Let's change our, our render settings here so we get a larger larger render so we can see this better. So as you see here, there is no there are no seams on this. So assuming that this is how we want the texture to be, we can then just simply project this, render this down to the texture of our low poly model. So I already have a low poly object uh, in the scene I have it selected here and it's already got its projection uh, cage set up here. Just review it real fast, make sure there's no piece of geometry sticking through uh, from the high poly. Which it looks about right, we'll find out after it renders. And I'll press zero to bring up RTT. I've already got it set up to use a projection modifier using the unwrapped and we can keep it an output into source and we'll render. I've already rendered this once. We go through and do this again. All right, well, let's make sure our material is set to appear in the viewport. I'll create a new view here to unclutter this. There's our material. Turn off this cage. So we have this low poly rock with, with a seamless tiling texture and we did not have to do any kind of unwrapping even for the high poly or add any kind of uh, modifiers to get the, the material to project and get on here how we wanted to do it. And it was pretty quick and painless. And in the end, in this case, we have a material that has a diffuse, a specular level, and a uh, bump map that you can then send into the game. And of course, you can use this to make all kinds of textures. We'll create another object in here. We'll just use a standard teapot and we'll uh, get random textures and we'll do all different random ones. So this one has uh, a random texture on each of the different sides. So in this case, you can see there's different colors. So this is gonna be very prominent. The dark the, from the bottom angle will be uh, a darker color. and These different angles will be different things. And I'm gonna select the teapot here and do a uh, use create a new map for this just so you can see a couple you know just so you can see another implementation with using random textures from all the sides so in this case if I zoom in and hit render you're going to see the uh, tiling textures on it now because of the way the projections work you may see some projections along certain angles that are very steep and large so the more dense your object is that you're projecting these textures on the better so the top here if you want to get rid of these uh, these skewed lines you'd increase the resolution of the object so in this case if I select the teapot and I crank up its segments and then re-render this you should see a much smoother uh, uh, any of those kind of projection problems will disappear Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can always learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest Wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you, and have a good day.